Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and this is Lime's second-gen Dodge. Now, a couple of things to get out of the way right off the bat. Obviously, this is a branded vehicle, and thus it is PC only. Now, this particular truck is also part of Lime's Donator Access Program, and you can find more info about that on Lime's Discord, which I'll have linked in the description box down below. Now, what are we going to be doing with this thing? Well, as you can see, it's got way more in suspension and axles than this particular size of tire would need. So, we're going to get into the garage, and we're going to go through all of the tire options, the engine options, um, the gearbox options, everything that is on the table for this truck. We're going to go through it, we're going to see what it's all capable of, and then we've actually come out to a different testing map today. This is the CTFT Proving Grounds, and we're going to run it through some interesting test scenarios. So, let's fire it up and get it into the garage. Also, it does have a actual second gen interior, and uh, the only thing is, it's not fully realistic, and I'll tell you why. The dash isn't splintered into a million pieces, but we're not going to worry about that. Alright, let's head into the garage. And even on the base suspension and the base engine, I mean, it's still really, really quick. Not only is it really quick, but the base suspension is actually what Limes would recommend for, say, for example, if you were going to race this thing on, like, a track, um, like, something like a, you know, like a pre-runner-ish kind of track, he actually recommends running the standard suspension for that because he has more time, like, really dialing in that standard suspension than almost any of the other suspensions on this thing. Now, um, some aspects of that could change later on down the road. However, that's what he has in it as of right now. So, let's go ahead and see what we can do with the engines. Now, there is a slightly modified 5.9 making 550 horsepower. Then, there is a heavily modified 5.9 that makes 1,100 horsepower. We want that one. Now, gearbox-wise, we have the 5-speed, which is kind of vanilla-ish. Then we have the fast 8-speed, and then we have the 10-speed heavy tow. The 10-speed heavy tow puts in work. Dude, it is insane. Now, we're going to go with the fast transmission for this one because the cool thing about the fast transmission is that obviously in automatic mode, you have your eight gears so you can just absolutely haul, but you also have all of your low ranges as well if you want to take this thing crawling or trail riding or something like that, but you don't want to switch out the transmission. Now, suspension-wise on this truck, do not sleep on the stock suspension. I am serious. There is so much tuning in that stock suspension. Y'all need to mess with it, and I'm serious. Like, you're going to love it. You're going to absolutely go. When you drive it, you're going to be like, oh my god, the level of tuning in the stock suspension is insane. And these are all active, by the way. Then, of course, you have the flex, which is going to be your rock crawling slash trail riding suspension. Then the general lift, which the lift is going to be for running pretty much like the big old mud tires. Then you have the quad load, which, uh, well, we know what that does. <laughs> and if you don't exactly know what that does, I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of a brief rundown. This began a while back as a little bit of a joke, and it evolved into basically Limes putting this suspension on his trucks where it's an active suspension, and when you activate it, the front goes like a million miles in the air, and the rear slams down, and effectively it looks like a way over the top, meme worthy version of a squatted truck that you could use to drive something into the bed. Then you have the short lift, which the short lift is a little bit of a, like an in-between, and then you have the tow tune suspension, which definitely use that if you're going to be hauling anything heavy with this truck. Now, we're going to begin with the, uh, let's see, we're going to begin with the stock suspension. No, no, we're going to come back to the stock suspension. We're going to begin with the flex, because the flex is crazy on this thing. Now, you have the stocks, which range from 40 to 52. Then you have these boggers, which I really, really like the boggers. Out of all of the tires available on this truck, I feel like these particular boggers suit the attitude of it more than any of the other tire options. Then you have the IROX, which we have seen on some of Lime's vehicles before. However, all of the tires on this thing have been kind of, you know, messed with and tweaked a little bit. Then you have the USD stickies, which the USD stickies are, I mean, again, some of you guys have seen these before, and I cannot think of a gnarlier tread pattern to see on any anything. I mean, if you wanted to take this thing crawling, the stickies would definitely be the ones to do it with. Then you have these. These are the hunters, which are a little bit more, um, they're, they're a little bit more subdued in terms of like how crazy the tread is, uh, in, in comparison to something like the stickies. But when you actually look at them, they're not 
all that subdued at all. They go all the way up to a 57 inch as well, which is pretty freaking huge. Then you have these swampers on some custom uh, American Force beadlock wheels, which look really, really good. Then you have the AX tires, which honestly, I really, really do like these. I think they kind of, you know, they kind of find a happy medium between like mud tire and rock tire. Then you get into the actual mud tire category. You have the cut boggers that go all the way up to 59s. You have the T1s, which those go from 40 all the way up to a 59 nine inch T1 tire, which these are going to be your mud bogging, you know, agricultural style tire. And we'll mess with those a little bit later on in the video. But for this particular build, we're going to go with these boggers because they are my favorite tire that you can get with this truck. I'm going to go with the 52s because I think they look really, really good with this particular suspension height. And then frame add-ons wise, you do have a gooseneck hitch. We're not going to put it in just yet, but it is there as long as you have the IR gooseneck pack installed. Then exhaust wise, you have stacks in the bed or you have a swank tip. I really like the tip. I think it fits the idea of building a second gen. I mean, I feel like, you know, whenever we think about a built second gen, we think about literally either stacks or a gigantic exhaust tip. And a gigantic exhaust tip on a second gen Dodge is basically a meme at this point. But I mean, I feel like it's, you know, it's literally become something that people expect so much that like, I'm super happy that it's there. Here, we have a couple of different options for hoods. We have a BOV hood, then we have a cowl hood, and we have a stock hood. I'm gonna go with the cowl hood on this one. Then bed cover wise, you can put a bed cover on it. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but that's one of those personal preference things. Then you have bumper weight, which uh, if you're on the flex suspension, it does that. But that's designed obviously for use with the towing specific suspensions. Now, wheels wise, you can kind of set up these forces to exactly what you want. And I think I'm probably going to do a... Oh, where did you go? Wow, okay. I think I'm going to do kind of the gray, uh, like silverish gray beadlock. That way we can set up the actual color of the truck to basically whatever we want. And the cool thing about it is, you know, you can run it in this sort of uh, gray with purple if you would like. Or you can go through any of the other color options and the emblem color will change as you go along. I really like that deep blue. I also really like the red. And I also really like um, some of these like almost radioactive greens. I, I think they actually look really good. But again, that's kind of one of those personal preference type things. So I think for now, I'm actually going to run the default because I think it looks really, really good. And Beans is going to go on the dash. And now we're going to see what the flex suspension is actually capable of. Because let me tell you what, it's capable of a lot. Let's fire it up. And if it's not quite high enough for the terrain that you're taking on, you can also always, you know, actuate the active suspension mode and raise it up a little bit more. Now, when I'm crawling, I like to keep the center of gravity a little bit low just because it helps, you know, it helps in terms of not flipping over, of course. But let's get this guy over to some actual obstacles. Now, there's not a ton of rock crawling on this map, but that's okay. That's okay because... It's got a lot of other uh, map features that are going to be super helpful to us a little bit later on. You know, ironically, you don't have to go up the main route. You can go, you can make your own route. Let's see if we can, okay, yeah, we're diff lock always on, all wheels always on. Let's see if we can go up this. It's made out of slick rocks, though, so it may be, maybe not right there, but let's see if we adjust our line just a little bit. How about we just send it? Dude, sending it almost worked, actually. Sending it almost worked, and it came close enough by just, like, sending it straight on that I think I'm going to do it again. I I'm like, okay, yep, sending it was close enough to working that that's what we might as well do. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. Yep, 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 there it is. Hey, I mean, when the rocks are too slick to slow crawl, you just have to send them. And honestly... Nine times out of ten, it works. I just can't get over the suspension tuning on this flex setup. It is absolutely wild. It is so incredibly well put together. Let's see if we can get a really good look at how much flex it actually has. Now, we don't have an actual, like, flex ramp kind of, like, in our immediate location, but that will give you a really good... Oh, right there. Look at that. Look at that. And it's not even... Well, it's kind of tucking tire in the back. But, like, jeez. That's insane. 
the amount of flex that that has, and keep in mind, you could still turn the active modes on and actuate it up even more. So now let's recover back to the garage. We're going to change the setup on this thing a little bit. We're going to go with a slightly smaller set of boggers in about a 45. Then we're going to switch to the stock suspension. And I'm going to take this thing through some obstacles so you guys can get a, a, like a really good look at what I mean when I say that this suspension is tuned so incredibly well. So let's put that up just a bit. And as a matter of fact, kind of think we should probably change that size up maybe one more size. Let's raise you again. Oh, come on, dude. All right, there we go. Yeah, that looks a lot more proportionally correct. And yeah, I was I was like, eh, I was I was going to change the wheel size, but or not the wheel size, but the um the actual like cover, color of the wheel itself, like the color of the beadlock cuz the red kind of looks odd with the gray and the purple in my opinion, but that's entirely personal preference. All right, let's get this thing turned around real quick. I want to hit a proper jump. Now, we don't fully have a quote-unquote bridge jump on this map, but we have a lot of other jumps, and I'm sure that this thing, this thing might actually over-jump this one. Come on! Dude, I was off-throttle and went, like, so much farther, so much farther than I was expecting to go. I lifted. I was not even on throttle going up the jump. That's how insane this entire build is. So now, another test that we need to do is we need to throw the lift on it. We need to throw some proper mud tires on it. And I'm talking about some, like, you know, T1 tires. And we need to get it over to one of the mud lanes out here. And, of course, we got to raise this thing into its, well, I say proper suspension height. There really is no proper height for the lift. You can just put it as high as you want, and that's about it. You know, like, that's... Like, you can put it as high as you want or as low as you want, and there's really no right or wrong way to do it. All right, let's bring you on down over here. See how you do in... Oh, my God. All right, we almost flipped it over there, but that's fine. And actually, for full mud truck status, let's see if we can... Where are the stacks? Let's see. There they are. All right. Three, two, one, go! I had to lift a little bit. I almost flipped it over. You want to talk about not struggling at all. I mean, forget, like, forget even not struggling. That didn't even, that acted like the mud wasn't there. I mean, seriously, it pretty much ignores the mud. I'm going to go back through the other direction and see if I can, see if I can at all get this thing to bog out, because if not, I'm gonna take it over to the swamp and see if I can bog it out there. We're gonna try a little bit of a different approach this time. Spool it up, and go! Yeah, dude, wow. Not even a single bit of, like, not even a single bit of drama from this truck. It's like, nah, we're, we're, we're fine. Like, w in what world did you think that that would stop me, it says. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Because now we're going to head to the swamp, because there's got to be some level of mud that will sink it. But I don't know if it's on... I don't know if the level of mud that will sink it is on this map. We might have to go to a different map later on down the road to find some mud that will actually sink this thing. Oh my god. Bro. This thing does not know what mud is. It's like, oh yeah, that's some... That's some damp dirt. That's not even mud to me. Holy smokes. And just to give you guys some context here, that particular mud bog is a mud bog that will actually make most trucks get completely stuck. Wow! Even in the deep stuff, it literally acts like it's just, it's not even there! Whoop! And... Nailed it. Absolutely just, just freaking nailed it. Don't worry about it. It is A-OK, -okay, no problem, just fine. Wow, that is absolutely insane. Like, that is so next level. I was not expecting it to actually to actually go that well. I was expecting it to go well, but maybe not that well. So let me actually throw some slightly larger stock wheels and tires on it, put the stock suspension on it. No, 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 no. Put the quad load suspension on it. Because you gotta do it. You gotta do it at least once. All right, three... Two, one, up you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there, there, there she goes. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, it's going to keep going. 
I've never done this on this truck before. Jeez! How does it drive? Um... About as well as you would expect it to. I- Oh god, it looks so awkward in the garage. I wouldn't recommend driving it like that by any means. But I suppose if you really wanted to load something in the back, uh, you could. You totally could. Alright, let's go ahead and bring it back down now. And I want you guys to let me know what you thought of this truck in the comment section down below. And of course, I will be down there to, uh, to answer any questions that you guys may have. And that is going to do it for this test run of Lime's brand new second gen. And if you enjoyed it, well, hey, if you would like to see more, once again, make sure you have those notifications on. And I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.